Hello everyone, very good morning. You are watching my YouTube channel CloudX India. So guys, in today's topic, I'm going to cover a very interesting topic, which is Active Directory Domain Services. So this is the day one. So in day one, we will understand what is the Active Directory and uh, why does it require, okay, and how to use it. So let's not wait guys and begin with the topic. So first, what is Active Directory? So Active Directory is a service service of Microsoft operating system, Windows Server operating system, right? Which you can install on any Windows Server. And once you install, so it provides you a centralized location where you can store all network objects. So when I say the network object, it's users, computer, group, printer, right? You can store over there. And whenever somebody try to access those objects over the network, it also provides the authentication and authorization. So uh, before going in deep to understand the Active Directory, we have to understand why Active Directory is required. What was the what was the problem when we feel the ID is required and it was introduced and every everybody adopted it. So let's see the scenario first. So the scenario is why to use Active Directory domain services. So guys, any guesses? Please feel free to comment in comment section bar if there is any anything I'm missing. So suppose you have multiple system in your organization, right? So your environment is in work group or a standalone environment, right? So you have multiple system in your organization. So uh, suppose if so you have a system, right? So definitely somebody will log in on the system and work for you or work for the organization. OK, so whenever you want to access on any system, right? So first of all, what is the basic requirement? You need a user account and a credential so that you can log in onto, onto the system, right? And here multiple systems are there, right? So I have depicted few systems, but in your organization, suppose there is a work group environment and you have 500 system or 1000 system, right? So if somebody try to log in on any system, so first of all, what you have to do, you have to create a user account over this system. If you will create the user account and pro provide the credential with that particular person, then only he or she can log in onto the system and work. Okay. And suppose this user is uh, currently it worked or logged in in this system and next day it comes and the system is somebody else are using or this system is damaged. What happened? So this user will move to the other system, right? So in this situation, what happens? So you have to create the same user's account and password onto the another machine. Or the other requirement, suppose uh, there is some other users also in your definitely if you have multiple system, so some other employee want to log in, right? So what do you have to do? You have to do the same thing. As a administrator, what do you have to do? You have to first create the local user account and password here. And then for other person, Maybe if dedicated, this system is dedicated to any other users. So you have to create the user's account on the second system as well. And in the same way, whatever the system, how many system you have, right? So whatever system you have, you have to do the same thing on each and every machine. Okay. So if you are doing this, right, you are creating users on each and every systems, right? So this is basically showing the lack of centralized management. Okay, because individually you are attending to each system and creating users account here and there, right? So this is one of very pathetic job or very tough job for any administrator, right? And it's not a right conditions. Second problem, suppose, uh, as I said, if this system goes down, right? And a user wants to uh, come uh, next day and want to log in on this system. So what do you have to do? You have to create this user's account on this system as well. So you have to create two account here. Okay, and if if this user uh, right, so th this is one of the problem and second problem. If user has created any file here, right? So suppose if user has created any file, suppose account file, this user belong to the account department and he has created some files, right? And this files, if the system goes down, what happened? The file also goes down or the other situation. If I take, suppose this person is also belong to the account. This person also belong to the account, right? And the file, whatever this file he has created, that is the common file or that is used for the group account account group right so and these other member also want to access this file so how will you provide this file to these users so the way if 
systems are connected uh, over the network so what you have to do you have to share this files or folder right you have to share the folders and then you can uh, share this file to other users but the problem here is when you are going to share any files onto the local system right so how will you allow this user this part suppose this user's name is uh, take an example a1 or mike bob whatever the name so a1 try to access or wants access this file right uh, which user Mike has created on his system so first of all you Mike will call to the administrator right system administrator and ask to share this file or exchange like transfer this file to a1 computers and also b1 computers okay so how administrator will do administrator will share this folder right so when administrator administrator will share it right so administrator the how will you allow the permission this is the one of the challenge for the administrator so in this situation what admin will do admin will create a sales folder and give the permission to everyone because this user will not appear on this local system or the b1 user will not appear on this system or this mic will not appear on in this system because the user's account are created which is the local user account okay so whenever you share any folder from here so you cannot specify the username in this situation situation you have to specify the conditions everyone and when you say everyone <coughs> sorry guys so when you say everyone so what happens so everyone means anyone this could be this a1 or b1 or any users inside your network or inside your organization right can access this folder because the permission are everyone so if you are uh, your information is uh, like a sensitive information you are having the sensitive information and you are allowing permission everyone so everyone means you are opening like uh, giving access to all whether those person require this file it's belong to the hr department or other uh, users or not but everyone is allowed so they can access it so the second problem comes into the work group or a standalone environment is the security issue right so you do not have the proper security mechanism you cannot uh, uh, like uh, protect the file you cannot uh, give the access to individuals right or a specific person who actually need it right if you allow everyone so it will be allowed for everyone and the problem if there is a security issue then your information is not private right so there is lack of privacy as well so if you are using the work group or a standalone environment right or uh, yeah definitely environment so you will face these three problem right the centralized management you have to manage you have to create users group on each and every systems whenever the password expire you have to reset the password from each system if you want to manage the apply some policy on a system right and you want to there is a common policy right so you don't want to allow anyone to uh, like uh, plug the uh, pen drive to the system right what you can do you have to modify the policy and apply to the system so what do you have to do you have to do the same thing on every machines right if you have 50 machine or 500 machine so you have to repeat the one task on 500 system so which is very like lengthy and tough process and uh, you cannot uh, manage it uh, properly right it's a time taking process for a single work and a repeated work and no one wants to do this so this is the lack of uh, management centralized management there is no centralized management you cannot control a system right from one system to another system in a work group environment <clears throat> and uh, the security issue we already discussed okay so what is the solution of this right so how can we uh, like uh, get rid of uh, this problem and uh, provide the centralized management enhance the security okay and enhance the privacy so microsoft introduced a service which is known as active directory domain services so what do you have to do you have to uh, take a windows server okay and install the uh, active directory domain services over there once you uh, install or configure during the configuration active directory domain services it creates two folder one is ntds and other one is the syswall ntds is your database basically folder where active directory during the active directory provision so it create a database which is known as ntds.dit so uh, ntds.dit is a centralized database which i talked in uh, previous uh, slide so 
entities.dit will be your centralized database so whatever the users account group or computers you will create onto the active directory that will go and store into into the entities.dit how does it function and how many partition are there i'll cover in another session so we'll discuss about in detail definitely so entities is your database and other folder which is the syswall so what syswall does syswall basically contain the policy and script information so if you create any policy in your domain directory services right so it is stored the template on uh, policy definition information into the syswall folder also if you are creating any script or something right so it also is stored into the syswall folder okay so all the policies and uh, script will apply to every domain you domain computers right or users from the syswall so what happens so <clears throat> as i said so microsoft launch or provided uh, features right active active domain services so it it basically help you to sort out this problem right it provide you the centralized management how so what do you have to do you have to once you create or configure the active directory domain services you have to integrate your system with the active directory domain services all your system you have to integrate with this okay and what do you have to do users you need not to create locally on any system right there is no need to create the users locally on any system you have to create the users on domain active directory domain services where you have to install the active directory so once you create the users here so that user known as the domain user and this user known as the local user so local user does not move from one system to another however domain user has capability to log in on any integrated any active directory integrated server whether there are hundreds of server or thousands of servers so this user has eligibility to log in any of the server based on the permissions whatever the permissions you allow it will uh, accordingly log in on the system right so you can even specify a user to log in on a particular system during this particular time as well right but by default user can locally log in on any uh, any system right which is integrated with your uh, domain environment okay so uh, in this situation so what do you have to do so if you configure the active directory domain services then you create the account here on domain not to the local user account right so this is the one of the features so it provide you centralized management okay how because this user whenever you want to modify anything from this user property you want to reset the password you want to reset the group membership change the group membership right so you need not to attend any system right you have to do the configuration from here right and this user is able to log in on any of the system and what happen if this system goes down suppose today what happens so uh, user can log in on to the different machine there is a no problem to the login okay and uh, second thing so the centralized management in the centralized management if you want to apply policy as i said you want to block the uh, pen drive right uh, or so that user cannot plug into the local system so what do you have to do you need not to apply the gpu local gpu or the create the gpu on every systems in your domain environment what do you have to do you have to create the gpu here onto your domain okay domain controller and apply to the particular ou where these systems are residing right and then what happens so one system will reboot after some times right there is some uh, duration okay so one system reboot this policy will apply on the systems and user cannot plug the pen drive so this is one of the feature you can keep the same password policy from here right so and and so many other things which active directory provide you to do the better centralized management second the we were talking about the file security right so if user created here file and want to share with the local other local system right so they have to provide the everyone permission okay and the system goes down so what happens so user will lose all the uh, files and folder as well so the other solution is if you integrate this with the domain so what happen you need not to provide the permission to everyone right so you have to create a group here suppose this user belong to any user belong to account group so you have to create a group here name it account okay and join this user into the this group okay assign the membership of account group suppose if there are 
two or 20 users domain user which is the part of uh, account group so what do you have to do you have to create a group account and join all 20 users into the account group and do not create the files or folder over the local system right so what do you have to do you have to configure a windows server okay and make it as a file server and store so in the into the file server admin will create a folder name it account okay and that will be the central file storage for all 20 user or hundreds user so what happens so user this user will not create any file here so this user will access this file server from its own system so don't confuse with this one so this user will access the file server from its own system and store all the information whatever uh, he is creating the file or folder right not to the local system it will create and file and folder and store into the file server okay and when the other user suppose uh, other domain user trying to access a1 as i said user a1 domain user i have created now so domain user a1 try to access these files whatever he has created right to uh, like access and do some work so what he can do he will not access this user system right what he will do he will access the file server directly once user hit to the file server what happened file server will verify the permission whether you have the access or not so how file uh, like uh, the file server will verify it send your information right to the directory server domain directory server where the account is created right and ask uh, is this user belong to this group or not so definitely uh, if you are a part of the this group so directory service will tell the file server yes this user belong to this group and okay so based on the permission assigned to this file server or file folders uh, whatever the shared here you will get the access onto the system so what happens so in this situation you have given access to this particular account okay onto the file server not you did not allow to everyone so in this way you will improve your security features and if it is shared with individual groups or users what happens your privacy will also not leak okay so your information is secure and safe so guys this is the reason why we use the active active domain services because in standalone or work group environment environment so information is scattered so uh, that is the main features of active active domain services so guys in next session i'll cover more about active active domain services and uh, guys stay tuned please subscribe my channel share with your friend and like it if you have any comment please feel free to comment as well thank you